Hey everyone, today we're going to look at question 3 from the 2017 MAT exam. Let's get straight into it. The question gives us a function called fk of x, and this equals x to the power of 1 over k. And this is valid for x greater than or equal to 0, and k is a positive integer. For part i, we're given a set of axes, and on it we need to sketch the graphs of y equals fk of x for k equals 1, 2, and 3. And on it we need to show where all of these curves intersect. Okay, so these are our set of axes, but first we need to work out what our three functions are. So f1 of x equals just x, f2 of x equals x to the power of half, which is the same as saying the square root of x, f3 of x equals x to the power of a third, which is the cube root of x. So these are our three functions, and we need to plot these. So we'll start off with the first one, which is the easiest one, and it's just a straight line through the origin and through the point. 1, 1, so like here, and it goes through 1, 1. Second one, the square root of x, this is a parabolic shape, so it curves around like this, and small values are made larger because uh, values in the range between 0 and 1 are made larger, values uh, after 1 are made smaller, because that's how the square root function works. So it's going to look like that. I should label these, so this is y equals f1 of x, and this is y equals f2 of x, and lastly, f3 of x. This is going to be similar to shape to f2 of x, but the curve is going to be steeper before the point of 1, of 1, 1, and then it's going to be below both of these curves afterwards. So it's going to look a bit like this, curve around like this, pass through the point 1, 1, and something like that. So that's y equals f3 of x. Last thing is to find where they intersect, and that's obviously going to be the point 1, 1. But don't forget there's another one which is at the origin, so it's 0, 0. For part ii, we need to find the area of the region between the functions y equals fk of x and y equals fk plus 1 of x. And then after that we need to verify that the area between f of 1 of x and f2 of x is a sixth. Okay, I'm going to let ak be the area between fk plus 1 and fk. So we can represent this as an integral. And it's going to have the limits of 0 and 1 because this is the area we're interested in. So from 0 to 1 of fk plus 1, so x to the power of 1 over k plus 1 minus fk, which is x to the power of 1 over k dx. And this is going to give us the area of the difference of fk plus 1 minus fk. So for a1, it's just going to be this area between f2 and f1. a2 will be between f3 and f2. So And this is going to carry on. So hopefully you can see it's going to get smaller. So we just need to evaluate this integral now. And it's a simple polynomial, so we're going to have x, and we need to raise this power by 1. So 1 over k plus 1 plus 1. But we can simplify this. If you multiply by k plus 1 here, we'll have 1 plus 1 plus, k plus 1 plus k. So I'm going to rub this out, and we can simplify this as k plus 2 over k plus 1. And now we need to multiply by the reciprocal of the power. So we'll have k plus 1 times k plus 2 in front. And in a similar fashion, I can do the same to this term right here. We'll have k plus 1 over k times k over k plus 1. And this is between the limits of x equals 0 and x equals 1. Now for x equals 0, it's just all going to cancel out. We're going to get 0. We're going to get nothing. So we just need to for x equals 1. And it means these terms are going to cancel out because 1 to the power of anything is just still 1. So what we're left with is k plus 1 over k plus 2 minus k over k plus 1. So let's cross multiply to try and simplify this. We get k plus 1 squared minus k times k plus 2. And this is all over k plus 1 times k plus 2. So if we expand these brackets out, we'll get k squared plus 2k plus 1 minus k squared minus 2k all over k plus 1 times k plus 2 again, and we get some cancellations, so the k squares cancel out, and the 2k's cancel out. So all we're left with is 1 over k plus 1 times k plus 2, and this is our answer for a k. So the last step, if I can just fit it in, is we need to calculate what a1 is. So the area between f2 and f1. So we just sub in k equals 1 here, we get 1 over 2 times 3, which is indeed 1 over 6, as required. For 
part iii, we need to find the x coordinates of the points of intersection of the line y equals c with y equals f1 of x and y equals c with y equals f2 of x. We're given that c is between 0 and 1, so I'm just going to sketch the line y equals c arbitrarily here onto a diagram. So this is the value of c, and this is y equals c. We need to find these points of intersection right here. So when y equals c intersects with y equals f1 of x, and when it intersects with y f2 of x. And we're just interested in the x coordinates, so where it comes down here. Just going to mark it here. So for f1 of x, we need to work out where there's y equals c intersect y equal x. So hopefully you can see that this is quite simple, it's just going to be c and c. So because c has got to equal x, and we know that y equals x. And for f2 of x, we need to work out where y equals c intersects y equals the square root of x. So we need to set c equal to x at uh, the square root of x, and if we square both sides, we're going to get that x equals c squared. So the x coordinate is c squared, and we know that y equals c, so the y coordinate is c. So these are co coordinates of intersection. And if we're just interested in the x coordinates, we get c right here and c squared right here. For part iv, which is the last part of the question, given that c divides the region between f1 of x and f2 of x into two regions of equal area, we need to show that c satisfies the cubic equation 4c cubed minus 6c squared plus 1 equals c. And then from that, we need to find the value of c. From earlier in the question, we found that the area between f2 of x and f1 of x was exactly a sixth. And we need to find the value of c that cuts this region into two smaller regions that each have area 12th, so half of a sixth. We're going to consider the region here below the line, and we're going to use integration to solve this. So we have that 1 12th, which is half of a sixth. This equals the integral, so the area. And I'm going to consider this area and this area separately. So we have this curve here and this triangle here. So the area between 0 and c squared limits 0 and c squared and we want the area of the curve f2 of x minus f1 of x. So it's going to be the square root of x minus x dx plus the integral. And now we want this area here from c squared to c, c squared to c of c, this line y equals c, minus y equals x, so c minus x and dx right here. So we just need to integrate these now, and so we get 1 12 on the left hand side, this equals, so this is x to the power of a half, we need to raise it by 1, we get to 3 over 2, multiply by the reciprocal, so we get 2 thirds, integral of x is x squared over 2, and this is with the limits of 0 and c squared. And then we need to integrate this, which goes to cx minus x squared over 2 with the limits of x equals 0 and c. So now we need to evaluate these limits. So 1 12 equals c squared. If we put it into here, the half and the c squared are going to cancel out. So we get 2 thirds c cubed. And plug it into here, we get c to the power of 4 over 2. And if we plug in 0, we're going to get nothing. So we can just forget about that. And then we're going to plug in x equals c. So we get c squared here, minus c squared over 2. And then, oh, this should be uh, c squared, sorry. And now we need to plug in c squared here. So we get minus, can I fit this in? c cubed minus c to the power of 4 over 2. Sorry, it's a bit squished. So now we can simplify this. There's going to be some cancellations. A 12 still equals, so we'll have c squared over 2 minus c cubed over 3. So the c to the 4s are going to cancel out, so we can just cross these out. And we have 2 thirds c cubed minus c cubed, so that gives us minus a third. And c squared, we got 1 minus a half, so we just get half c squared. So I'll bring it over here, and if we multiply by 12 on both sides, we get 1 equals 12 times a half is 6 c squared, and 12 times a third, so we get minus 4c cubed. I'm just going to do a bit of rearranging and we're going to get 4c cubed minus 6c squared, bring this on to the other side, plus 1 equals 0. And this is our answer.
So the last part of the question is just to find the value of C. We know it's between zero and one. And if you do a bit of inspection, you plug in a few values, you're gonna see the, the answer is C equals a half. And you could just deduce this from the graph as well, but you could plug this in to check it. So that's the answer, C equals a half. Okay, so that's how you answer the whole of question three from the 2017 MAT exam.